In this video, we're going to introduce truth tables. So by the end, you should be able to answer this question and I will put up a solution video 24 hours from now. So what is a truth table? What are they for? A truth table is used to show the truth value of a well-formed formula for each possible assignment of truth. So basically we take all of the possible worlds out there. So if we have two propositions, A and B, we have a world where both A and B are true. We have a world where A is true and B is false. We have a world where A is false and B is true. And we have a world where both A and B are false. And we see what happens when we take those two propositions and use operators on them, like the negation or the conjunction and so on. So we have a little notation here. We say that the value of some well-formed formula alpha, we write that as the truth value of alpha. So whenever you see val of alpha, that means the truth value. So we have some conventions. So if alpha is true, then the value of alpha is one. So we use one as true. In some textbooks you see t, in some textbooks you see one. I like to use numbers because you can think of a lot of these operators numerically. If alpha is false, then we say that the value of alpha is zero. So in this case, uh, zero and f are often interchanged. If something is not true, it is false, it is zero. So let's take a look at each of the operators one by one. The negation. So this is the word not, and how this works is the value of not alpha is one if the value of alpha is zero. So basically, uh, if we have p as true, then not p is going to be false, and vice versa. If p is false, then not p is going to be true. It's like, I am asleep right now, that's false. I am not asleep right now, that's true. So if alpha is one, that means not alpha is zero. And if alpha is zero, this means not alpha is one. Now we can think about this numerically, which is why I use numbers. And we can say that the value of not alpha is equal to one minus the value of alpha. So let's say that alpha is true. Well, this means that the value of not alpha is going to be one minus the value of alpha, which is one, which gives us zero. So if the value of alpha is one, then the value of not alpha is zero, which is exactly what we found in our truth table in that first row. And if you do this with uh, alpha being false at zero, you get one minus zero, which is one, which means if alpha is false, then not alpha is true. So that's the negation operator. Let's do the conjunction. So if we have a conjunction, this is just corresponding to the word and, if we have the value of alpha and beta, that is one, if and only if the value of alpha is one and the value of beta is one. Basically what this means is that A and B is true if A is true and B is true. So if alpha is one and beta is one, that means alpha and beta is one. But in the rest of these examples, uh, beta is false, so alpha and beta is false. In the third row, alpha is false, so alpha and beta is false. And in the fourth row, well, both alpha and beta are false, therefore alpha and beta is false. So this is like uh, the scooter is red and the scooter is new. So if the scooter is red and new, that's like alpha and beta. So because the scooter is red, the scooter is new, we can say the scooter is red and new. Okay, numerically, here's how we can do this. The value of alpha and beta is the minimum of alpha and beta. So in the first row, for example, if we take the minimum, well, if alpha is one and beta is one, the minimum value of one and one is just one. In the second row, we need to take the minimum of, well, alpha is one, beta is zero. So what's the lowest value of one and zero? Oh, it's zero. Okay. What about in the third row? We're taking the minimum of zero and one. Well, the lowest value there is zero. And in the final row, the minimum value of zero and zero is also zero. So we can get a truth table using that mathematical formula. And when you have logic that is multi-valued, meaning you have logic between zero and one, so you could have say 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.17, these formulas still work, which is why I like to introduce them early. So that way, when you get to more than just zero and one, you can still use these same things. So that's the conjunction truth table. The disjunction, 
So this is our word or. We say the value of alpha or beta is one, if and only if alpha is one or beta is one. So at least one of these two has to be true. Both of them can be true and that's okay. So in the first case, we have alpha one, beta one, then alpha or beta. Well, at least one of these is true, which means alpha or beta is true. In the second row, alpha is true, but beta is false, but at least one of those is true, therefore alpha or beta is true. In the third row, alpha is false, but beta is true. So at least one of those is true, therefore in the third row, it comes out to be true. But in the last row, alpha is false, beta is false. Therefore, neither one of alpha or beta is true, therefore alpha or beta is false in the end. So this is a 1110 truth table. So this would be like saying, uh, the dog is black or the dog is brown. Well, if the dog is black, then yeah, that's true. If the dog is brown, yeah, that's true. What if it's a dog that is both black and brown? Well, yeah, that's true. The dog is black or brown. In fact, it's both. But if the dog is, say, completely white, then it's not brown, it's not black, therefore it's not brown or black. Now numerically, let's take a look at this. The conjunction took the minimum value. With alpha or beta, with or, we just take the maximum value. So in the first row, the maximum of 1 and 1, what's the highest number here? Oh, it's 1, so that's true. In the second row, we're taking the maximum of 1 and 0, because alpha is true and beta is false. Well, the highest number there is 1. In the third row, we get the same thing. Alpha is false, but beta is true. So what's the highest number of 0 and 1? It's 1. But this last row? Well, alpha is false, that's 0. Beta is false, that's 0. So what's the highest value out of 0 and 0? Oh, it's 0. So that's another way of getting our truth table numerically. Okay. The conditional. This is our fourth one. This is a little bit unintuitive at first. So the value of alpha arrow beta is one if and only if alpha is zero or beta is one. So if the antecedent is false, the conditional is true, or if the consequent is true, the conditional is true. So going through each of these rows, the first one, alpha is true, beta is true. Well, our condition says alpha is false or beta is true. Therefore, this is going to be true because beta is true. In the second row, alpha is true, so we don't have that first condition met. Beta is false, so the second condition isn't met. Neither of those conditions are met, so the second row is false. The third row, well, alpha is zero, so the antecedent is false, so this whole row is going to be true. And the fourth row as well, the antecedent is false, so it's going to be true. So this is a 1011 truth table. Now. The way I like to think about this is you have an antecedent and you have a consequent. So the antecedent is like the condition. So if the condition is met, then the consequent should be met. So if the antecedent is true, the consequent must be true. If the consequent happens to be false, then this is a lie. Because if I say, let's say, if you eat your dinner, you'll get dessert. Okay, you eat your dinner then you should get dessert. If you don't get dessert, I've lied to you. So it's false. But let's say if you eat your dinner, then you get dessert. But what if you don't eat your dinner? Well, then it doesn't matter if you get dessert or not because we can't test our hypothesis. We don't know if it's a lie. So we just assume that when the antecedent is false, alpha arrow beta is true because we're not finding a lie here. That's how I like to think of it. It's because this whole thing is a little bit unintuitive, especially these third and fourth rows, this is where students often say, wait a second, this doesn't seem intuitive. And you're right, it doesn't. Um, but that's sort of the way I think about it, is that the conditional is false if you're caught in a lie. And the only lie would be, if you do the condition, you'll get this thing. You did the condition, but then you don't get this thing. And that's the lie right there. Now, if you don't like that, there's a nice numerical method. And that is... The value of alpha arrow beta is true if and only if the value of alpha is less than or equal to the value of beta. So in the first case, 1 is less than or equal to 1, so this is true. In the second case, 1 less than or equal to 0, oh, that's not true, so the second row is false. But then in the third and fourth row, we know 0 is less than or equal to 1, so that's true. And in the fourth row, 0 is less than or equal to 0, so that's true. Now, this only works 
when you're using zeros and ones. If you're using values like say 0.5 or 0.25, then you can use the second one. And that is it takes the maximum of not alpha and beta. So really this condition right here just corresponds to this meaning. And I won't run through that example here with these things, but you can try it yourself in the comments if you'd like, but you'll get the same results as what we did right here. Okay, finally, the last one is the biconditional, and the biconditional is quite straightforward. The value of alpha if and only if beta is true if the values of alpha and beta are the same. So in the rows where the values are exactly the same, the output will be the same. So in the first row when they're both true, alpha biconditional beta will be true. In the last row where they're both, both false, alpha if and only if beta will be true. The two rows in the middle are false because the values are different. One is different than zero, zero is different from one. Another way you can do this is by considering the fact that alpha if and only if beta is the same thing as alpha arrow beta and beta arrow alpha. So it's just a conditional in both directions. And if you remember, uh, alpha arrow beta would have a truth table like 1, 0, 1, 1. If we did beta arrow alpha, we would get 1, 1, 0, 1. So when we add these two together with a conjunction, it's only going to be true if both of these are true. So that's the only case in the first and fourth row where both of these are true. So we'll end up with a truth table of 1, 0, 0, 1. So uh, that is that thing right there. So that's the truth tables for our five basic operators. At this point in time, you should be able to do this question where we add a new operator. And I give you the conditions here. So I say when this is true, well, I guess that includes this part right here. And based on that, I'd like you to try to fill out this truth table. There will be a solution video in 24 hours from now, so look forward to that. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them when I can.